function hall. This we have our store here. We have our sister named Desira. She's a designer. She designed clothes. Uh, we have natural vibes in here. We have the function hall where we keep all our functions for the House of Rastafari. The House of Rastafari was established June 26th was our first initial meeting with Abuna Fox from New York, the high priest. He came in, blessed the house, and from there on we was gathering every Friday every Saturday, where Friday we have history class and Bible teachings. On Saturday is our Sabbath, where we give praises to the Most High, where we chant, beat the drums, and connect spiritually. We are at the house of Rastafari, stores natural vibes. The sister, in, she's a designer, just designer. We're going to enter into the... This is our function hall. This is where we keep most of our events. As you can see, behind on the wall, there's flyers of our prior events, successful events. We've been bringing lectures in the Brockton area for the youth. Our main purpose here in Brockton are I had a vision, and the vision is to, to gather the people together in love, peace, and harmony, and just do the works of Rastafari. Um, in the vision, it showed me that I and I have to touch the youth, the youth of tomorrow. So what we did was put together what we call a curriculum where we're going to have graphic design, we're going to have a studio, and that's one of the purpose of us, our mission, is to have things for the youth them, to educate them. People here in Brockton, and not just here in Brockton, but all over the world, not of color, but of we, that we are here to uplift fallen humanity. We deal with the oneness. My inspiration came to a vision. His Majesty come to me and told me I have a work to, be, to do, and I have to give up everything to do the work sacrifice. So I and I just put the, the whole thing into my thought process in a meditation and the most I just tell me, Jared, just Brockton is the place to be. The people need the works. There's a lot of rosters here. We're not dealing just with roster, but we deal with humanity. You have a lot of children need to be taught. So I just came forth from Brockton and the father told me that I have to uplift the people from the fallen humanity, gather them together in love, show them what is love, show them peace, show them that life can be beautiful for them by the choices they make in life. Life is about ups and downs. And through my experience in life, I've been through a lot. And by me being going through a lot, I look out there today and through my education of studying history, 
studying the past, studying the present, and looking into the future. I see a lot of destruction. So by me seeing a lot of destruction, it caused me a lot of sorrow, a lot of pain within me. So within inside me, there's a giant that rised up out of me, told me, you have a work. And here it is. I just come forth with the help of sisters and brethren here in the Brockton area to, to cultivate the one them, gather them, and show them a different way in life, show them that we can unite. We can, we can come together and do the works of the Father. Through the music, you know, is where we spread the message. And as you can see in the background, we have in instrument there. And in Psalm 1, he say, he said, make a joyful noise unto the most high. Through the way of instruments, you know. And we as one, we try to put up conscious, positive vibes where the people them can get a message through the music. And through we trying to send a message through the words of showing the people them not just by the way of talking, but action, you know, by our works. And the music is a very important tool. That's, that's one of our main tools, you know, because if you can see the youth them today, they love music, whether it's rap, whether it's reggae, uh, R&B, you know. As long as we have a, a message, we with it, you know. Music is music, because music come off of the heartbeat, and we as Rasta, we play the heartbeat, and the heartbeat is just the drum beat of the drums. So. We bring it all, we bring all different forms, we bring poetry, we bring rap, all conscious to the people then, because there are different walks of life. There are some people listen to reggae music, some listen to rap, some listen to poetry, some listen to jazz. Whatever the music may be, we bring it in a positive vibration to the people.
Greetings in the name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, sitting and reigning in the hearts of all women and child. King of kings, lords of lords, the conqueror and the tribe of Judah, elect of God, earth, right through Ruler Selassie I, first. Ja? It's a great honor. I and I, there here today, on behalf of the House of Rastafari, I represent him. We was looking forward for this day, and we give thanks for the President trailing all the way from New York on a journey to be here with us today. To teach us holistic health, natural health, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be. We give thanks and praise unto the Most High, God, Jah Rastafari, King Selassie the first. Today is a mystical day, which is every day is a mystical day. But those of y'all who's here today, y'all made a good choice. Because what you're gonna hear, hear, you might not hear it nowhere here in Brampton. I tell you this, these virgin here have been traveling all through America, England, and all over, healing people. Healing, not suppressing diseases, but healing people by the blessed gift of the Most High God, Jehoshaphat. So it's a great honor for Abdul Bridge in them. And I want you to just give them a warm welcome. If, you, if, if, if the temple of God, this is the temple, your body, and if you defile the body, by eating polluted things. It's defining the most high. It's simple. Discipline, you know. That's all it is. Discipline. Spirituality starts with the cleansing of the body, the mind. So it can be pure, the energy transcending. You want to feel each other. You want to touch the heart and the mind telepathically. We can step from distance and thought. Because why? We ain't throwing our balance. We want to be on the balance. And how you got a balance? You have to eat right. You can't say you're doing this and doing that and doing that. You're not eating right. You have to eat right. So no delay. I and I call up. The first guest speaker is Rash Hashim. That's right. Rash Hashim. Give it up for Rash. Let all the thanks and all the praises of all the glory be unto the Most High, Defender and the Protector, the Provider, the Giver of Life Everlasting and the Creator of Worlds without end. You alone do we worship and you alone do we ask for help. Forgive us of our sins and failings and lead us along the right path, the pathway of those to whom you have bestowed your grace, not on the pathway of those who have earned your anger or those who have gone astray. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight from this day forward now and forevermore. Greetings. It's good to be here at this time among the brethren and the sisters, you know. It's very important for us to get together like this to exchange ideas, get to know each other. And I'm real comfortable, you know. I can feel the love and the positive vibration in the house tonight, you know. And I know that this group is going to do a lot of positive things, especially for the children, you know. Because that's the generation we have to focus on. Those like from eight, nine years old, you know. We have to start to focus on them because in 20, if we bring them right, in 20 years' time when they are like about, say, 27, 25 years old, you're going to have some positive youth out there ready to 
He was trained and ready to move in position of leadership. We are here to create leaders, you know what I mean? Because that's what we are lacking right now, leaders. It's not that the people is not ready, you know, but we need leadership. And the first thing we have to do when we deal especially with the children is what they eat, because we are what we eat. No. Like the Virgin was reading, the Almighty said, I've given you all grasses bearing seed for food, and all fruits with seed in it. That means we have to drop out the hybrids and the genetically engineered things and we have to drop out all those fruits without seed and seedless grapes and the navel orange we have to kind of drop those out because the minerals and vitamins in them are very unbalanced you know because they are mostly hybrids it's like man saying well I can make this orange better than how God make it so I go to do all kind of things to make it into a more, to improve on it. And when the Father say, I've given you all seeds for food, you know, seeds cover a wide range of things. We might look at seeds and say, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, you know, but seeds include. So when you look at 90% of all the diseases out there today that affects us, it's directly related to what you eat and your lifestyle. Sure. Look at AIDS. Totally preventable disease. Totally preventable. It, it has directly to do with morality and upful lifestyle. You know, and it's proven in the world in many, many different countries. Countries side by side. See what I mean? One will have 30 percent AIDS and the other one less than one percent. But them side by side. Why is that so? Because when you look at the, the moral and ethical standards in each of them is different. Most countries that are oriented towards a western lifestyle in terms of party time, boogie down, you know what I mean? Liquor club, nightclub, party, you know? Pornography. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look in West Africa. Look in South Africa. Over, over 30% AIDS. Look in Botswana. It's about to wipe out the entire population. Zimbabwe. Malawi. All those Western oriented countries. AIDS is high because their lifestyle is low and immoral. You know, so the only way AIDS is spread is through body fluids. Jumping in bed with every woman, you know, meeting a woman and a girl meet a guy and same night them in bed. When you eat meat, it slow down the vibration of your brain cells, cut you off from other realms of inspiration and guidance. When you eat fruits and seeds, it, or the, the entire the vibration and every cell in your body speed up, especially your brain cells. The frequency of your brain cells improves, speed up, like a radio, you know. If a station brought, say God broadcasting at 95.3 FM, but because you didn't di dis you disobey his law and you can't tune into that frequency, you tune into about 93. You might get the station, but you're going to get it with static, you can't get the message clear. So you keep making mistakes over and over again. Similar. When you don't eat right. You eat meat and processed foods which lack in certain elements that the body needs to function right and increase the frequency to a level where you can tune into the inspirational to inspiration and get divine guidance and inspiration from IRM Salamin. But right now, true we do it right, we are cut off from that divine guidance and inspiration, so we keep making mistakes. See what I mean? So, eating have a lot of effect, that's why I say what we are, what we eat. 
Take for instance a disease like asthma. Look at all the major diseases that affect us today. Asthma, diabetes, bronchitis, high blood pressure. Directly related to diet and lifestyle. Them things easy to cure. Them things are hard to cure. Can cure any one of them things in 30 days. Just by changing the diet and applying certain herbs and utilizing certain foods in the diet, you know. Them things are easy things to cure. God didn't make it complicated or hard. He made it very simple. I've given you all herbs for medicine. You know what I mean? So, but Satan said, no, take this. Make I cut you and be a drug or something like that, you know what I mean? But we have to go back to the herbs and get him back in harmony with nature. You go down with the sun, rise up with the sun. When it's dark, man must just be chilling out and communicating with the Father. You know what I mean? And we rise up with him in the morning. You know what I mean? So when the sun reaches so and starts to go down, it's done, you know. Yes, sir. Don't bother try a thing then. You must when the sun is up. You rising with it, you rising with it, you rising with it, you peaking when it comes. So guys just getting up, guys getting up also. <laughs> so far, right? From it, all them have it so. Well, you add from so. Rising. Once the sun starts, go so, you know. But everything going down back again, you get up on the downside. So you go in, when you rise up, you are struggles like you struggling. But you can't do nothing about it. Everything becomes harder. Everything, every, everything you have to do in life becomes harder. Because you try to rise when, the sun, when everything is going down. You are fighting against all the forces in nature. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. I say, oh, oh, it's so hard and even just everything easy and even just chilling out and things like that. You know what I mean? Because you. We rose with that cycle that we are in because we are all in that cycle. Once we stay in that cycle, we in harmony with all the forces of nature. But how it is it going down and you try it. It's like that waterfall. See the guy going down? No, don't care how hard he paddles, you know, he can't go back up, you know. You have herbs that the maroons used to use like the spirit weed. When it bloom a certain time of year, you know, you can use it and it speed up every cell in your body, you become invisible. Maroon used to do that in the Caribbean. British, they have recorded history of British troops going back to the base and showing with them going and running and saying that all the trees turn against them. And you'll see the trees shaking and stone coming through the trees and things like that. So herbs have many, many different uses. And once we get back that knowledge, we have a lot of power to do things with the herbs, you know what I mean? So, that for medicine, not really for food, you see, all we get to eat vegetables is when we were deprived of certain things. Our ancestors used to steam the herbs for us to have as a supplement to the diet. They used to call it pot herbs, pot herbs, where they would cook the herb in the pot and we used to eat that to supplement the diet that we had at that time. That's how we come to eat green leaf and vegetable and them things, but we don't need them things. Another thing we don't need is eight pints of water. I was just talking about it this morning, how the medical profession get together with the water companies and issue memo to the doctors through them various newsletters and magazines. Tell everybody how to drink eight pints of water every day. But water can drown you, you know what I mean? Water log your body, overwork your kidney, your blood, and your urinary tract. Our body is already about what? 80% water, the balance is very clear. One sip of water can bring you back to the balance. If you take two sips, gone the other way. That excess water is going to settle around your heart. Next thing you know, you have heart problems. You know what I mean? We drink water when we're thirsty. That's why God give us these senses to get when we drink water when we're thirsty. And you don't glug, glug, glug either. No, man. You see?
sip it. Sip, sip. By the time you reach the third, fourth, sip, you sip it to bring the water back in balance, you know, because you don't want to glug it. Then you take a big glug, we'll bring it so and show the balance off. So you sip, 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 and then the thirst gone, you stop. You don't need to drink no water, we need water for it. The fruits and vegetables where you eat, the fruits where you eat, can contain up to 80% organic water. Then how come God in Genesis never tell you to drink water every day? If it was so important, why never tell you that? He tell you about the seeds and the fruits, because I know we get everything we need from that. You see what I mean? So, he never tell you to drink this man. When man wants to sell the water, that's why the water companies them rich now. Because everybody have a bottle of water. Every way you see people on the street, they have a bottle of water. Sales techniques reach you. You know what I mean? And we just drinking the water, drinking the water. Better eat a fruit. You have organic water. Any poison in that fruit lay in the fiber. You know that fruit was raised in a place where them have chemicals and sprayed with chemicals. Those chemicals lodge in the fiber, not in the water, not in the juice. And 80% of that is natural water. The vitamin and minerals just make up a small proportion of that. The majority of it is natural, organic water. That's where we get our water from. Those of us who eat pot herbs, which we call vegetables, that also contains 80 to 90 percent organic, pure water. The best water to drink is rain water. See, God bring me water from the sky. We mustn't drink water when we run from the ground. That's for animals. Animals drink that. They give me water from the sky, 100% naturally distilled water. We use that in the country. Yes, sir. Up to today. Yes, sir. Man better learn how to catch rainwater. When the water gets poisoned and all the parasites, they multiply to a level with the chemicals where they're putting in them now, can't kill them. A lot of the cancer and disease we get coming from the water we're drinking. Majority of them cancers and things called all cancers is super microscopic parasitic infestation. Cyst and fibroid the same thing. Super microscopic parasitic infestation and as that colony expands them say, oh it's spreading. As the colony gets bigger because we keep eating the junk and feeding the parasite then. The colonies get bigger and bigger. So when they cut you. Frankenstein business that when them open up from the light at the spot you know the parasite them run in the bloodstream and they'll take out that nest which is that lumbar goggles they'll cut that out and it's just like that you know what I mean just one piece of meat a chicken leg about all two weeks gone behind that so <laughs> Yeah, it's true, it sounds funny, but it's true. Uh, yeah, you, can't, you can't disobey the law and expect not to have some consequence. The consequence of disobeying the natural laws of nature, which is the laws of the Almighty Creator, is sickness and disease. You can't get away from it. You and I run loads, but it catch up with you. Sorry, so it catch up with you. Can I get it from it? See? The next level of eating, you know, you have to tell, just running through some of the, the, the common diseases that we have, like asthma. Asthma is a disease which is the accumulation of mucus in the breathing passages, which primarily comes from milk, butter, egg, cheese, rice, flour, chicken, and dead meat. You know what I mean? The mucus from that, especially, narrow it down for even four, the milk, the butter, the egg, the cheese. Anybody here with an asthma, stop eating those. You're going to see a traumatic improvement in that condition with no matter of days, no if, no and, no buts, no maybe about it. 
it's, it's so it go. You see? So to cure asthma, what you have to do first is drop those things out of your diet and start to take something to clean what mucus already accumulates in the breathing passages. Breathing passages get smaller, less air can go through to the lungs. It affected you in many other ways. Your brain not getting enough oxygen because you're not getting enough air in the lungs to put enough oxygen into your blood to get oxygen to your brain. So a lot of things is being affected, not just the asthma alone. Cure the asthma, cut out those foods, take some herbs to clean out herbs like eucalyptus leaf, mullein, you know, excellent herbs for any kind of um, respiratory condition, the ginkgo leaf, you know what I mean? You have the jack in the bush, the trumpet leaf, you know what I mean, those herbs that you can use to combine and any three of them and just clear the mucus out the breathing passages. You cure asthma, simple as that. It don't take no all those respirators and things that they're giving people and hooking them up. Madness. Money, money business. Medical profession is a money-making organization. It's an industry. They don't see them advertise all on TV to make profit. They are not there to, to help you. They could care less about you. They could care less about you. The med Western medical profession is responsible for 90% of all the diseases that are affecting mankind by reason of their Igno not ignorance, but by reason of their craze to make money and to create life because it's a satanic system. Satan run that. Because in trying to create life, so that we can say I'm just like God with all these this other things they're doing. It's satanic and ungodly. That's why God go and bust them down. And those who link with them go and get some disease where nothing can cure. Because we didn't see nothing yet. You have diseases that is lurking around the corridors of hospitals that is nowhere outside. True. Yes, you can get that to Check any hospital, they tell you that. Any doctor will tell you that. Why think doctors do it? Make the 90% of the of doctors do let the children get no inoculation. But when you're a baby born in a hospital, before you leave them, have at least 10. At least 10 injections with different drugs they put in, make him a drug addict before he leaves the hospital. Your children must be born in your house. You understand me? And you don't register your child with no government. Who is government? Where government come from? Eh? That you have to tell government say you just have a child. Well, Mohammed, Mohammed, peace be upon him, said that the only thing black people couldn't cure was death. <laughs> no. Black seed, one of the most significant things about black seed is that it raises the T cell levels in the body, thereby strengthening the overall immune system and improving any condition you have. Good for respiratory ailment. It's good for almost anything. And you can eat it. It's perfectly safe. You can eat it. You can use it in your food as seasoning. You can crush it up, put it in water, drink the water. Or just eat the seeds. It strengthens the, the T cells in the body and strengthens up the immune system. How about uh, preventative cancer? Um, something to help prevent it? Generally? Funny enough, coffee is an agent that prevents cancer. And most of the foods in the cabbage family, they say, will do that. Like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, you know what I mean? There is flaxseed oil with garlic in it, excellent flaxseed oil with garlic in it, excellent berries. Best of all, just eat berries daily, prevent all that. And again, avoid the meats and the dairy. And foods with chemicals in it, avoid that, you know what I mean? Keep the body and the blood clean all the time. Exercise, get fresh air and sunlight, can't attack you. And green tea too? Very good, especially for women to drink the, the real China green tea, you know, not Lipton and them kind of tea. The real China green tea, it prevents breast tumors and prevents, yeah, and retard the growth of cancer. It retard the growth of the cancer, you know? 
And there's a there's a lot of soy products going around. I don't know if you touch touch this subject, no, however. No, no, oh, that's what I wanted to ask. Okay, thanks. Nine percent of the soy products is, is genetically engineered soy beans that it produced from, right? Soy products cannot if if you go have a little soy of organic and more not more than two times a week. This milk utilizes almond milk, sesame seed milk, or coconut milk, especially for the baby. First, first solid food for the baby is a jelly coconut, crushed avocados, you know what I mean, them kind of things, crushed ripe bananas, grated apples. Them is the first solid food. If, if you go to a level of cook food for the baby, just pumpkin, squash, them kind of things. But you don't go no further than that with the baby. Uh, well, arthritis is, is uric acid settling in the joints and the muscles, you know. Eat pineapples because that will break up the uric acid. Cucumbers, juice two cucumbers. Cucumber. Everybody full? Yeah. Yeah. Not full, but just. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, somebody yeah, eat too yeah, much, you get sleepy. Because when you eat too much, you know what happens, right? You get tired, you know? You get tired. Yeah. But as the person be here, he didn't say that. Eat light. Don't eat so full your belly. Just eat it till the hunger. Small portion. One meal a day. Yeah. When you eat that one meal, make sure you have all the substance. Yeah. All the minerals in that meal. You know? So, we have a beautiful brother, you know, trailing again with the brethren them and he's going to touch on education little history and yeah little history on Rastafari what Rastafari is for those of you who just walk in the lights of Rastafari these men who try to earth open doors for other Rastas so with no delay I call up my beloved brother Rast Solomon give it up for Rast Solomon Yes, greetings, beloved, virgin and sister. My name is Rath Kalman. I'm the official international representative of the Rastafari faith and community worldwide. I greet in the name of our beginner and savior, Kalamawi, Ayri Selassie, ever live in the faith for the sure of time, Father, Mother, Almighty, that's right. Peace and love, one love. Yes, um, I as a... Uh, as, I, as you heard, my name is Ras Salaman. I'm also a urbanist and socialist, also an entrepreneur person. I live in West Africa, and I also go to East Africa, try both places. Myself and brother Ras and Abdul Hakim, we just came back from Ethiopia. So we have a marvelous video. We share a mm. TV screen here. We could show the video, but it's kind of getting late. You know, but next trip, we're coming up here for Black History Month, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so mm. we'll need more people from the community and show our beautiful people we were traveling to Ethiopia. Yes, education is paramount by means necessary in whatever development or liberty. Our beginner and savior, Ali Silasi, was head of the education department for 40 years. And I remember 15 years ago, he said two profound things about education that sticks in my head. He said, we in Ethiopia establish education so both the adult and the youth must learn. Education and the quest for knowledge stop only at the grave. That makes you say, hmm, like Arsenal oh, usually say, right? Hmm. <laughs> and he said also about education that there's three types of education. There are general education, special education, and higher education. So, that does show me that all people, regardless of color, class, or creed, must always learn and seeking knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because the great Marcus Garvey also said that education is not only in a classroom or university or college, but education is everything around you. It is in the book Race and First by Horace Campbell. Education is paramount to all of us. And education is a must. Because regardless of what culture or faith you gravitate towards, Islam, Christianity, Muslim, Buddhism, Rastafari faith, you need to know something about the faith. So um, I'm just going to give you a brief history on the Rastafari faith with the 1960 report. The 1960 report um, that they done July 1960 in Jamaica, the University of the West Indies, 
That report in the first paragraph was saying that we are a set of people that we are heterogeneous. Heterogeneous means that we have a few things in common, but we can have various thinking. And the more you listen to members of the Rastafari faith, the more you're going to hear people saying different, different things. But it's still one accord, which is first Irish Celestia. Yeah, mm. You're never going to hear me say Celestia because I went to an Ethiopian and I studied that. The word Kadamawi, Q-A-D-A-M-A-W-I, means first Kadamawi. Virgin and Sishinu don't know say Celestia, but the intention is right. However, the sound phonetically is wrong. So, you never hear me say Selassie, but you hear me say Karamawi, Ali Selassie, which means the correct way. The European put the highs at the back of his name. So, so you have people over here who don't know say Selassie High, but it's supposed to be the first Ali Selassie, because he's the, he's, 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 he's the first and he's omnipresent, omniscient. So in the history, the 1960 report was mentioned that after two weeks, a few scholars from the University of West Indies went to the western Kingston of Jamaica capital and studied the history of Rastafari. And they did two weeks, which they call a fortnight, and spent with the Virgin and history. And they realized out of the history that the 90% of the Rastafari field read the, read the Bible, the King James Version of the Bible. I have a copy here. Which, um, this is the first original Bible. Not, not the original Bible, but this is the first of the King James Bible. Just a brief history of how this Bible came along. King James, who was a member of the Church of England, he was excommunicated from the Church of England because the society that he was in found out that they, had to br they brought up some charges against him. He was a wine babbler, meaning he drink wine, and he was a drunkard. And they say it was a homosexual, and they also say it was a murder, he killed a family member. So, being this rich, pious man, get excommunicated from the Church of England, he went aside and summoned 47 Jewish scholars to 50, which one of them were uh, Sir Francis Beacon, also his pen name known as William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare was one of the writers that uh, put this together. So King James was excommunicated in 1590s. 1602, he summoned 47 to 50 Jewish scholars together to put this version together. So they, they took 15, they took 1602 to 1611, to the date right on the frontier. You can pass the road and show you what. They take 1602 to 1611 and present this version of the, the so-called Old Bible. But in the beginning of this Bible, she said that they had a copy from the Ethiopian scrolls, the Ethiopian documents. No Bible throughout the world is older than the Ethiopian Bible. Myself and Brother Rassan and Joachim, we just saw two Bibles in Ethiopia. One was 900 years old, and the other one was 1200 years old. And it's all written in Geese, and, and, and some of it is in Amharic. This Bible do have no L-O-R-D, do have no G-O-D, do have no J-U-S-E-S in it. So what I'm trying to say is that this King James version of the Bible, yeah, it came around 1611, which is published at 1611. So what happened is that if you check 1611 to 2003, it's about 399, 400 years, 400 years. So how can we look into a piece of document which is 400 year old compared to the original document which is 900 year old? Also, what, what we discover in, in, in Ethiopia towards the Bible and Christianity is that Ethiopia have Christianity over some 9,000 years. The West only have Christ Christianity 2,000 years. So that means Ethiopia and Christianity 700 years, 7,000 years before the West. So anyone into whatever Christian faith, Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Presbyterian, what, whatever you want to name it in the, in the Christian denomination with various fractions, if you want to know the truth, you have to come to Ethiopia. When we went to Ethiopia, in the Lalabella region, there is 11 churches. And you may see it in Discovery Channel and National Geographic that these churches shape like a cross, make out of a single rock. The brother and I went to the 11 churches in two days. We walked through all of these churches. These churches are section in these churches that are called the Holies of Holies. The curtain where certain relics 
behind these walls that they've been there over 9,000, maybe up to 10,000 years. Only men who are clean in the sense that didn't marry, don't have no wife, never go to a woman, can touch these things. There also was a, a special 24 carat cross that they touched the brother and me, making the sign of the cross. They say if you come at a certain time, on a Thursday or the 27th of the month, of the month in St. Emmanuel Church that made in 24 hours by angel. That's another mystic in Ethiopia. Things happen overnight a lot in Ethiopia. And I think it's all the construction of the country going because they were man and woman 24-7. They were building a new airport, not December ground, December before. And we saw women with wheelbarrow and construction equipment working at 12 o'clock in the night. So when I remember when we went to Lalibel and went to Emmanuel Church and they said built in 24 by angel and man that King Lalabella had to give Queen Lalabella a pure 24 carat cross. And the symbol of the cross is heavy throughout Ethiopia. Ethiopia is 90% Christian, biggest Christian kingdom in the world. Earth. And 90% of the kings then are defenders of the faith and defend the Christian faith within Ethiopia. In Gondar, King Phalisius or something like that, he was a polygamist king. Because what we have to complain again as people within the Rastafari faith that monogamy exists and polygamy exists. There is some of us can marry one wife and there's some of us can marry more than one wife. There's some sister can deal with it and there's some cannot deal with it. However, all these things is in the African tradition and the African culture. However, coming back to the report again, the 96 report, because it's a brief history of going to, to go towards education. They also find out that the, the Virgin and Sister they want economical um, development, they want repatriation, and they want reparation. So when I hear in America, them talking about repatriation and reparation, it's not new. I think all Caribbean people and all black people who their four parents and went through slavery, they need some form of reparation and they need some form of reparation. Rep rep reparation who want to go back home because what happened basically is that the great Marcus Garvey, our prophet Marcus Garvey, he mentioned that there's 400 million African outside of Africa willing to shed their blood for Africa. It's not the African and inside, it's one of them outside. So it's us who are the lovers of Africa and who are Pan-Africanists and African nationalists going to build Africa and, and get Africa in harder. Even the great Bob Marley say Africa awaits its creator which is us again outside Africa. What we have to complain about Rastafari liberty with Africa is that we have to pick a lot of things different, different, show the whole Africa. For, like, for instance, in Ethiopia, I know the Naya being the group saying that we are all Ethiopians. And I'll be honest, the brother and I went here, the Ethiopian culture is a culture where it is nothing compared to the Western culture. They eat raw meat. They, they work at a different level, they communicate at a different level, they angle men, women and children at a different level. We are not like that. We are mostly from a Babylonian standpoint because 99% of us come out of Christian, Muslim, various backgrounds. And when we come within Rastafari field, some of us came with so much baggages that we don't, we don't try to shed some of these things. Like within Christians, they say, when you come within Christian, you're born again. Well, it is a, it is a similarity within ra the Rastafari liberty. When you come in it, if you used to be a rum drinker, cigarette smoker, a liar, uh, child abuse, man abuse, woman abuse, and being this devilish, evil person, when you come within this feet you now, wearing locks up on your head, not twisted like could have been to me, but wearing locks. Why wash it and leave it so it grow naturally, take it organic stage. When you grow locks up on your head, you must know that you're separated from men and people and from the average person. The book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 5, says that, I'm not going to be verbatim, but I'm going to do my best, so that all your life you'll be separated unto the law, and you shall read the locks up on your head and make no reason that touch up on your head.
So today when they say people that wear lax and a man may wear lax and shave him face, they can't know if they don't already hate him doing what they doing. Or a man say him dread lax and he shave on the side. Just like you see a sister who says she gravitated to Rasta and she's into Rasta but she wear pants. It's not something where you can pattern anything from that individual. It must be that that individual don't ready yet. However, when the sister ready, nothing can stop her. Rasta when the brother ready, nothing can stop me. This is a liberty where you have to comprehend that you are like a new person again Rasta in every way. You are new, new. So what you have to do really yeah. is that shed some of the baggage and some of the confusion that will plague in your life. Because you're coming to a righteous life now. Mm -hmm. Rasta yeah. is about positivity and righteousness. Rasta right. Rasta is not something where you're going to come and you fake and still tell the sister them lie, mm -hmm. abuse them, confuse them, and you yourself are going to keep playing a trick all of your life and say that you use this news that when you're in pasta, Yes, you're just an imposter, you're not no Rasta, you're an imposter. You cannot live this liberty and be even like you were somebody that you never know this, you never know that. When when you come within this faith, the liberty and the education is so powerful that you must be a wrong individual. When I say a wrong individual, no, you must be lawyer, doctor, teacher, mother, father, sister, brother, taxi driver, speaker, carpenter, plumber, but you must be a wrong individual because Check this out, you know, any part of the world, any individual who is not up to see it, see you, you know, they're looking at you as a Rasta man or woman, that you have knowledge, you know something. I see church Europe, I see church Africa. When I trad, the people them don't look upon me like a hard narrow man, even in the airport and even in public places. They look upon you, the Rasta man or woman, as somebody that has knowledge. There's no way a Rasta man will go to the airport or on a scene and somebody sick or dropping out and she can't give her open hand. She's supposed to be the first nurse and the rest of man is here with the first doctor. Comprehend? Yes, mm. yeah. So this is a liberty where we have to keep practicing it. One of the highest order within Rasta is esoteric metaphysic telepathy. Telepathy. Telepathy is something where we all do every day. Normally we say I'm going to go home, or I'm going to say Ras, or Jared, and within 24 hours to 48 hours, Jared, turn, turn up. up. And he just Lassia. mentioned his name not too long ago. Lassia. That's a telepathic power within Rastafari and within Lassia. Lassia. the people. Lassia. 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 Metaphysic is that when people see in public, especially other masonry, like doctors, lawyers, teachers, the priests then, they don't know so that how oh, you can the precept of wearing dreadlocks and wearing locks on your face and wearing this African look, tired and wearing this look different. They don't say you're supposed to know something. So 90% of the time, these mystic people will test you. So if you don't know your esoteric practice mm -hmm. or your metaphysic practice, you get licked. Simple as that. Today you'll hear and see Rasta brothers that are sisters of cancer of diabetes, of all type of sickness and disease. You know what happens? They violate certain laws. I remember 40 years ago, I usually hear written in liberty of Rasta that man can't dead. Man can't dead. Rasta can't dead. And I usually think so, think so, think so, you know, and I always think that yes, shoes real. But I say, 1997, 96, 94, Three, four of them and sick in Australia can't stand that. And big Rasta man, big, big luck. Why that brother died? Why he passed away? He's not living up. He's not living up. But the good part about that is that we must comprehend also as a certain medicine that we live two lives. We live a visible life and an invisible life. Sure. When this structure reach and repair and get a leak, get a blow, it loses oxygen and fade away. But the soul, which I call the spirit, the soul lives on. The soul is an atom force that cannot die. An atom force is a life force, an energy that is in all things. So we have to comprehend that this is a liberty where you cannot take it light, my brother or sister. If you have to cover your head, cover your head properly. If you have to wear a dress, wear a dress and wear it properly. Virgin, you can't wear name brand clothes and you can't keep wearing European clothes. Get African clothes. Support Africa, buy black, live black. 
That's, 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 that's the liberation, the emancipation of both Rastafari, you know. Still within the culture. Like Brother Rastan said, make your economic be part of the culture. Like for instance, we should have at least four or five different distributor here products this evening. That have these products for sale. However, we are not so prepared or organized. But some people do, so we can't say nothing. So what I'm saying is that we are more African clothes. The summer coming up here, take off some of them big boots and them ugly boots. We are more sandals that the, that, the, that the feet can get more we, oxygen. We are more cotton material clothes that your body can get more oxygen. We are light fitting clothes. And when the summer come to, brethren, stop staying air conditioned, come to the parks, come to the open fields, get energy and the life force from the grass That's and the sunshine right. that gives vitamin D. Help it to restore your melanin. 99% yes, of us due to not utilizing the sun, which the sun focus is a focus that we must really, really, really deal with. When you deal with the sun focus, it helps us to cure and kill certain diseases in your body. I, I am saying that every summer, I think, if I'm not in Africa and here, just go to Prospect Park or in the big park. I'm saying Prospect Park in Brooklyn, New York. And lie down in the sun and take two hours of sun. Some people cannot go in the sun because the melanin, the melanin and things like that. However, if you eat right and you live in right, you can absorb the sun. Yes, because we are sun focused people. Psalms 84, verse 11 says, The Lord is the sun we have. I don't quote everything verbatim, but just go look for them. Here's the Psalms 84, verse 11. And also, the book of Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 verse 14 and 15 says, He who omnipotent is kings of kings, lords of lords, conquering land, dwelleth in the light where no man can approach. So when them said to me, Where is Celestia? Where is your Celestia? I just live in this court all for years now. That he's in the light where no man can approach. Mm, Celestia. Rastafari, the son of God. So, it, it, it was bugging me and bugging a lot of people for a while. Where is Majesty gone? Where is gone? We should not step aside. Speaking about um, His Majesty's disappearance in 1974, well, when we was in Ethiopia the other day, a couple of months we'll be a year, there's a special church in the square named Mascal Square. Mascal in Amaric means cross. And there's a church named St. Stephanus Church. And Two gods, I see them outside the church and I talk to them one time and this God tell me, he said that this is a church where Ali Selassie come into this church and never came back out. I said, no, the New York Times, which is the paper of record, said he died, they buried. He said, sir, this is the church that his majesty went to and never came out. I said, what is this? Yeah. So I went to Sheshamani now and I saw Ella, 68 year old named B.J. Moody. He said to me, he said, Rastalaman, did you went to St. Stephanus Church? I said, I passed him, so that's the church in my church went into 1974. I never came up out. And I saw another old man when I was on my way to Wanda Gennett. Wanda Gennett now is a special volcanic bath where his majesty go seven days before his birthday and seven days after his birthday he spent time there. This is a volcanic bath where it says, when you build into this place, it puts seven years on your life and takes seven years off your life. So I went in there and I spent two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Eating pineapple and papaya the whole day. They said, Rasta, I'm not coming. I said, Come out of this. No way, this is the fountain of youth. Yes, sir. Maybe I look like a youth now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Us that lose over 200 million through the Middle Passage, yes, the slave trade through the west coast of Africa. Back from the ocean. We just ended on the 18 something, and we're in, we're in the 19 something. So we're about 100 and a couple of years now. So that means. We are the people. We are so wounded. See, we are passing post slavery syndrome. All of us going through that. You have a set of us who say, nothing too black, no good. Some people say that, uh, me in Africa, me in Africa. That's nonsense. All black people are Africans. All black people. Before there was any America, any Caribbean, any other place, Africa was first. Yes. Africa was always the center of the Carib the center of the world. It's ice age break it up. Even France today, not France, Spain is only forty miles off from Morocco, not Africa to Spain. So sure the country that was so close, it still have a forty miles distant gap. 
but before the ice age, it was just one country. Must remember, read Ivan verse in my book. They came before Christopher Columbus and the African in Europe before the European. We were people that go that was spreading out all over the world. Don't think that I'm racist, you know, and racism, you'd be a fool if you don't defend your race. And that's how I see it. If I defend my race, then you call me a racist. But if I'm talking stupid thing about black and white people, maybe you can call me a nice guy then. <laughs> <laughs> However, you have to understand it. All races come out of the black race. All races. Look at the history channel. A couple months ago, the woman named Eve, them showed a single, single black woman where the DNA can trace back to all nations. As a matter of fact, this week gone on channel 13, something again about the Bushmen of um, Botswana. Journey of Men. Journey of Men this week on channel 13. It showed you again that a simple, simple set of black people who is in Southwest Africa, Botswana. These people are the DNA of all human beings in the earth. So you're going to look for me as a Rastaman and tell them that they're African. And you're going to look for me as a Rastaman and tell them that they don't come from Africa. And you're going to look for me as a Rastaman and tell them that um, I am Black American, I'm, I am African American, I, no, I'm, I'm Jamaican, Trinidad, and all these micronationalism. That's another thing. We as a people, we should overstand by knowing that our survival is at stake. But this micronationalism of black American, Jamaican, Caribbean, Barbier, Suriname, Genocide. this thing, that's confusion, total confusion. A separation. We are all African people, are all Ethiopic, Egyptic people, make it, make it just more put together. And we not to be scared or be dauntless for not telling all the other race of people say, okay, I'm first. This thing we're them calling black people third world people. Who is first world? And who is that American Russia? And who is second world? We are first world people. We are first in everything. So we need to have lobbyists to go to Albany and Washington to show say that we want to stand up on a stronger ground than just pure African American and the third world business. The leaders in the Caribbean and the leaders in Africa are a bunch of Uncle Tom, Trump, nigger people because 99% of them go to school in Europe and also in America. So when I leave with Europe and America with the so-called democracy which means just popular votes and by one man one vote, that's all democracy means. But you have to understand this now. The, the American democracy carry a lot of spying and CIA and covert activity behind it. Just like in Venezuela the other day, in April this year, they was going to get out the leader because he was too black and too close to Fidel Castro. So they used, the American CIA used police as usual and army military to get out the brother. And then all of a sudden when Bush and the CIA get busted, they have to put back this man in power. Now this man is in power and this man is taking advice from Fidel Castro of Cuba and other great leaders. This man trying to use the oil wealth in Venezuela to help all the poor people because once you're Latin America, you know, it's rich in culture and in minerals and in revenue. However, 99% of the government then in the Caribbean and in Latin America run by America CIA. Mm -hmm. And when the CIA run the country, they, they keep the country down so the cocaine can keep coming in, mm -hmm. so the tobacco can keep coming in cheap, so the coca beans can come in, in cheap, and so certain revenue within the Caribbean can come out easy. Right now they're fighting this man named Robert Mugabe in, in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Southwest Africa, and here they find this man telling all the Caucasian farmers to leave to get out. This man named Ian Smith, who's a running place, was Rhodesia. He won a place big like the whole of Brooklyn, and the man never paid a penny for it. Most people who are Caucasian are living in Africa. They have the best part because I live beside them in the suburbs. They have the best. And 99% of the time, they don't pay any money for nothing. They just come in and exploit the generals, the politicians, them, and the police, head of the police, and get, and get their way out and do as they like. So we have to really comprehend that we have to stand up as a people because our survival is at stake. So we have, to, we have to stand up as a people. And education, you know, stepping up on education. The alphabet system, we must examine it because it carries 
Echoid song, they call it. Echoid song means imitation song. Like for instance, it is A-E-I-O-U, that's the vowel system. A-E-I-O-U. The first, first, first letter of the Amharic system is I. And Ethiopia is a high vowel system. Within early days of Rasta, to show you that the Rasta then was kind of gravitating towards the high vowel system. Conscious or unconscious. They usually say I nana, not banana. They yeah, yeah. say I meto, not tomato. Yeah, and they would say high and I. Because yeah. the I is personal and predominant. So what I'm trying to say is the, 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 the alphabet system, if you, if you just examine the word alphabet, alpha means ox in Hebrew and bet means house. So the alphabet means animal house or ox house, mm -hmm. letters. Like for instance, the A, the A E I O U, the 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 the, 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 the A, you can put it with B A and get Ba, you can put it with M A and get A and get Me. Sheep sound, goat sound, echoic sound. You can use certain like for instance, the peak, the peak say we. You can use the double and use the I and get we. Get what I'm saying? And I just say this roughly. If I had a, 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 a blackboard, I could read more clear and everything. But we, right now, we're just trying to grab knowledge and try to work with knowledge. But everything I said, though, I, I'm going to use a disclaimer now. <laughs> everything I said, don't say what Solomon said. Go get the dictionary, go get the research, go on the computer, go to website. There's so much website. Just go do your own research. However, we have to work on self, and I'm going to focus on this. We must work on self because we cannot teach these children and we take it out. We supposed to be intelligent, mama, and this intelligent being, and check this out. We are the only people after we finish drink our mother milk, we're still drinking animal milk. Why are we doing that? Mm -hmm. Some of us here have cold milk in our fridge when you go home tonight. If we do have it, our family have it somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, the case and point is that after you wean from your mother bread, you shouldn't have it in cow's milk, goat milk, and all these various milk. Almond milk is better than any milk, even the fire bean milk, the almond milk, pumpkin seed milk, sesame seed milk, and all these things, you know? So again, we have to work on cells. If you don't work on cells, that you, that you, that you, that you can really kid yourself. Because our biggest problem is, you know, is to deprogram, you know? Because due to the mix-up mood and attitude, we need to deprogram so much. If we don't deprogram ourselves, we're just going to keep on going around in circles and circles. Because some of the behavior that we have, it just tears us apart, mash up family, friends, all type of relations, even jobs, due to the mix of mood and attitude. So what we need to do is work on ourselves. I'm going to say for the new year, work on self and economics. You know why I say self and economics? You can work on self. And you reach a certain plateau, but then you check it out, you don't have no money. Mm -hmm. You don't have a job. You don't have an income. So I think everyone has to work on self and economics. Find a job, find an income. Find some way where we can work together. And I believe this is a great proposal for this organization. Um, ja Red, what you must do is see in this organization, this is just my own honest advice. Try open a food co-op and open also a susu, you know, like a saving fund, yes, yes. where everybody here gets a juice book, and you see from a penny to a million dollars in that juice book, and maybe you can have some easy loan term where 48 hours, 72 hours, 7 days, you can get a loan from whatever money you have, pay back at a small percent. The bank may charge 10, 15, 20 percent, but <clears throat> in this lending organization amongst us as black people, we could really start out with, say, 5%. 5% for the paperwork, for the system in the office, for the connection, to go to the bank, to get everything together, you know what I'm saying? And also the food co-op is that the best thing for us to do is shopping in bulk. When we, as a people, we are, like, for instance, Jared, you now go buy some honey, you know, buy the fruits, them, and this and that. You see, if some brothers and sisters can get together and we say, well, okay, being as half Rastafari faith, known as Rastafari faith, we are vegetarian. So why not go to the market and sit there and buy a box of orange? A few boxes of some vegetable, a few boxes of some fruit, a few boxes of peas if you use peas, beans, etc, etc. But no, 
This is Salud. This is why I don't give the mm. Arab, Chinaman, Korean man, mm. Caucasian man, two hundred, one hundred dollar. You see what you say? You see her grocery bill for one hundred dollar. She could spend fifty dollar in a in a in a food court. I was buying bulk food and get more than what she get for the two hundred dollar. But again, Jude so much mixed up more than had a Jude, and our thinking is so warped and to deal with separation, micronationalism, and not knowing each other. Another thing is, you know, like I said, it's liberty, you know, it's a liberty which in Rastafari and weird. You have to deal with humanitarianism, regardless of color, class, or creed. However, our prophet Marcus Garrett said, race is first. So, work for yourself first. Work with your people and first. Don't try to, to say you're working with yourself or your people, and then you're backbiting your brother, or you're telling a lie, or you slandering him, or standing your sister. Don't do these things. Mm. Stop telling the sister lie, and the brother and the sister they must stop playing games. Stop playing games, sisters. Because the first one is humbleness, the second one is honesty, the third one is respect, the fourth one is responsibility. They are going too fast, right? Third one. Uh, let me start. With. The first one is humbleness, the second one is honesty, the third one is respect, the fourth one is responsibility. And the last one is commitment. Everyone get that? Who don't get it, I can't go away it again. Humbleness, honesty, respect, responsibility, and commitment. Why I choose these five principles of development is that I know it works for myself to use in these five principles. I know it can work for anyone else. The thing is that we are the people, due to we're not disciplined in Christianity, Discipline in Islam or discipline within Rasta. We don't have no principles. Rasta So we have to have principles because we as a people where in a part of the world you go, people looking at you for an answer, people looking at you for some reason. But a man, when somebody sees this man with red, green, and gold, and he look like a Rasta man, he said, very look funny like he's a little hip hop guy, maybe because you have any earrings, maybe. But after you reach a certain level and a certain grade, then take it out. Well, let me explain about the earring, you know. His Majesty has seven year old to eleven that we are airing in here. Yeah. yeah. So that that was us Ethiopian culture by um Makone's father. Now you're being I'm not to do Ethiopia. Start to really speak like this, but rather with education and information. Now you're being is a woman from eastern Uganda yeah. named Queen Mazuzu. Naya Bingi. Mazu Muzu. Naya Bingi. We have to comprehend this within the Rasta struggle that the Naya Bingi Hara that carry the flag like this Ethiopia with. The Naya Bingi Hara is brothers and sisters, mostly brothers that chanting death to black and white oppressor and then get the team death to, white, to black and white oppressor from Kenya. It's not Ethiopian. Although again, this I'm sure say in Africa in, within Rasta fire liberty, they pick a little like this and that shows Africa. So the Naya Bingi is a house of chanting, 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 and a viral celebration and long light of celebration, five years, seven years. And some of them are always, burn this, burn that, burn book, burn computer, burn this, burn that. And I mean, and still, again, word, soul, and power. I remember, you know, when we say burn this, burn that, the first and earliest, now being Jews in Brooklyn, New York, the man said, fire, burn this, fire, burn, fire, fire. And guess what? Fire. If I come into the building and burn up the building and mash up the first day of being gear house, me and Rasta me see that. <laughs> <laughs> the man have everything, fire this, fire that, fire. And guess what the man tried to do? Try to keep a Naya Bingi, which is outdoor with wood fire, into a house? <laughs> All them should have trimmed the shade, they shouldn't call themselves Rasta, right? Because you can't make a move like that, keep fire in a house. This is a part of the problem, so a man who will fire his bosom and doesn't get burned. <laughs> a part of Proverbs to that. So, here's some point I'm trying to say. The Naya Bingi order is a radical order. And it's also a very beautiful order. But it is mostly a churchical order. But it seems that a chanting for 60, 75 years. It seems that a chanting. And no development for man, woman, and child. Today they're trying to that. Then from the Naya Bingi, you have an offshoot. You saw the 12th tribe of Israel. The 12th tribe of Israel now was by a brother named Harrington known as Prophet Gad. He was part of the Ethiopian World Federation, Local 15. And he broke off from Local 15 and formed the 12th tribe of Israel, 
coming from out of Genesis, I think it's 38 or 28, the 12 tribe of Israel. But it's somewhere in, 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 in Genesis 49, 48. So if you have time, I can look it up though, because I have things marked out. So what I'm trying to say that the 12 tribe of Israel, they keep projecting 12 tribe of Israel. But when you read the, the part of Genesis about 12 tribe of Israel, it mentions 12 children and a daughter named Diana. So you the 13th tribe of Israel. Not twelve. Again, I believe about woman. Again, I say we cannot make no former African black liberty or any struggle leave out woman. Yeah. After we're not going to war. If I come in here and I say it's pure man, I go and leave. Because mm. I'm not in a war business. That's right. No. So we have to always have woman. So the twelve tribe of Israel, most times they speak like Diana, which is a thirteen child and the only daughter of Jacob. Them don't mention of she, they mention of just the twelve tribe, which is just virgin alone. So, them am to be one of the biggest organizations, England, Canada, Africa, and the Caribbean, the twelve tribe of Israel. But I mean they do parties, where they have a dance, which includes a khaki dance, a gold color dance next week, a green color dance next week, a, a, a yellow color dance there a week. And most of the time, they smoke cigarettes and herbs, and they drink liquors, and they humanize. And one of the most disturbing things to me, which I'll get to correct about the Church of Israel, I can barely comprehend a brother of two and three sisters as baby mothers. But I cannot comprehend when a sister has four baby fathers, three baby fathers, five baby fathers. In the Church of Israel, you know, correct me, I'm yet to correct you. Know. When a sister leaves a brother, a next brother take her over. So she ends up with three baby fathers. And then things they. We can't go to Africa behaving like that. I'll be honest to you. And we can't develop ourselves behaving like that. We have to wake up, wake up. I'm a little bit distracted and highly concerned. This brother here is crying. I wonder why he's crying. Yeah? <coughs> okay, okay. Let me leave it at that. But you have eye water. Yeah, okay. So, the third tribe of Israel is one of the biggest gathering of Rastafari people. But they say also them is a Christian organization. So we have to be careful how we say in church of people is a Rastafari organization. They say they are Christian. They say that they will emperor the as as king as Christ in his holy character. They, they say they accept Emperor Selassie as Christ in his kingly character. Nothing wrong with that, but true and pro Rastafari faith, you don't really check for that. And then they behave and then style. So then they will move on to the next set of group in the Baba Shanti. The Baba Shanti was um, founded by Prince Emmanuel Edwards. Prince Emmanuel Edwards was a man that used to be out in the western city of Kingston, Jamaica. He used to jump Baba Shanti, used to jump Pocomina. He used to tie, his, tie a belt around his waist, a piece of car around his waist, and have a scissors in the side of his waist, and wrap him in. And as an African spiritual way of giving thanks. And it was using the name um, Pokomina and an earlier one the name Kumina. Mm. So out of these these, these, these these type of spirituality or spiritual awareness, he formed a group named the Bobo Shanti. He left from East from West Kingston to East Kingston, ten miles where he still have headquarters. He died sometime in the eighties. I have to spread a little humor in this, you know. I was around when he passed out, you know, just when I was getting together the North Rasta movement. And the manager for Sizzler today, anyone know the reggae artist Sizzler? Yes, sir, His manager have him driving around into a car for like two weeks till when the prince body starts smell. They want to dig a straight hole and bury standing up. You can't go and make a research. Don't say Rasta man say that. Don't say that. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, you know, is I'm trying to say is that there is various fractions within the Rastafari faith, which is so sad, because Christianity are various fractions, mm -hmm. Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Roman Catholic. We never need to have that in Russia. We need a oneness. We need a oneness. When I'm in Africa, I project a oneness. But in Ethiopia, by Sheshamani, they have division the same way. They have Third Tribe of Israel, Naya being the Baba Shan, and about the Ethiopian World Federation. The Ethiopian World Federation now will make another proposal to Brother Jared that he should really talk to Brother Rassan Abdul Hakim and see if he can get Ethiopian Federation local up here. I speak to Brother Ras Mikkel, 
and you can read, can read the constitution and know it. And I think he will correct me that you only need 25 people you know, to, 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 to um, put in the application and get a charter, a local for yourself. They will give you a number and everything. Once you have 25 people and you come to a convention every year and you read and study the constitution and every December you have the election of officers just in your local, he will explain all that to you. So you have like about four fractions now within the house of Rastafari. You have Naya Bingi, Third Tribe of Israel, Boba Shanti, and the Ethiopian World Federation. The Ethiopian World Federation, I think all black people in Syria should get involved with it sooner or later. I was one of the first early member in 1992 in, in um, Brooklyn, New York, all in New York, when they tried to revitalize it again. This is an organization. July, no, August 28, 1937, was sent to the West by Emperor Ali Selassie, by his chief physician and cousin, Dr. Mala Ben, if I pronounce his name right, Malako Ben, something like that. And this is an organization where the preamble within the constitution says the membership must comprise of all the black peoples of the world. You understand that? Mm -hmm. They said the membership you know, must comprise of all the black peoples of the world. That means that if you are Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Rasta, revolutionist, communist, socialist, you can be a member of it. And it's so beautiful that he gave something like 1,100,000 hectares of land in southern Ethiopia, south of Addis Ababa, for people who joined the organization and want to come home to Africa. So I went there the other day and make a look around and I see the same confusion with black people all over the world. Mm. The Turk tribe is Ran Jackson for the land, the Boba Shante, the Naya Bingi, and the same Ethiopian World Federation members. The Ethiopian World Federation members comprise of members from all over the world, all type of people. But then you have some black American brother here, like a special brother named Robinson that's in town. He has certain people that he was given that was given to him by his Imperial Majesty, personally. And then there's a Helda from the Naya Bingi house of some people also that he was given in 1973 or 72, a year or two years before his Majesty was the throne. So what I'm trying to say really is that we don't need all these divisions and these separations. Be we don't need it. You see, only thing I'm going to say about them, which is positive, is that if you are outside of Africa and you was and you gravitated to the 12 tribes, the Naya Bingi, the Boba Shanti, or the Ethiopian World Federation, and you get your spiritual upliftment from that. Keep that. However, when you come to the continent, don't come and tell me, like I live in Ghana, and they tell me in Ghana, the Boba Shanti, and say, why you have to come on a prince of money with Boba Shanti? You have to come with the earth, why not the Rasta? Saturday evening times, when you go to the 12 tribe of Israel meeting, you say, a hundred brown bags of Guinness stout, chicken and fish is ready because their things are already elaborate and you see maybe four or five Caucasian looking sisters from Boston and two brothers them from England or some part of Europe, Switzerland and everybody is Rasta. So I go there so on Saturday and say, what is this? Oh, we have so much mixed up people here and all this food and this. they always tell me to Rasta and money have to leave and they take me out every time. So what I'm trying to say really is that we need to know about these fractions within Rastafari. Right? We need to know about them. And like I said, I propose Brother Ras Ja Red to really inquire about getting a local up here for the people in this year. Don't get me wrong enough. Keep the house of Rastafari. Don't get me wrong. Keep that because it is you and the sister them upliftment and guidance. However, there's none Rasta people in our midst here that can still be part of a great Ethiopian African organization. So don't kid for them alone. And you must overstand this as a member of the Rattati for your face. You are not alone. And not by yourself. No man is an island, no man stands alone. So what you have to comprehend is that we're pro Rasta, yes, because you're a faith that however, try remember you're also a humanitarian individual. So you have to look out for your brothers and sisters. So if you can supervise a local of the Ethiopian World Federation in this town, do it my brother, because it is for the welfare of the people, of, the, of its members, and it will be a great, great thing if you can bring it here. 
So we need to know about the various fraction of the thing Rasta fire, which is very sad. Um, Naya being the third tribe of Israel, Boba Shanti, and the Tribunal Federation. And all of them is trying to do something to help and deal with repatriation, but most of them not repatriation. There, there was, there was a, a early stand within Rastafari right, that how can I give up a continent for an island that some of the British them holding on and Rhode Island here and holding on a Long Island. You comprehend what I'm saying? Yes, some of them not going to Africa, but I said this openly, secretly, and I said anytime, there is no way I could accept Emperor Ali Selassie and Africa and not going home to Africa. No way. Mm. It makes sense. How oh, can you say that you're after Rastafari faith and you're not going to Africa? Are you not going home to Africa? Are you not defending Africa? You just want to stay in Long Island, Rhode Island and the Caribbean Islands mm. and not going home. That's nonsense. It's like a man saying he's a Muslim but he don't want to go, go, go to Mecca. Or, or a person say they are a Christian and don't want to go find Jerusalem. You get my point? Okay. So I'm saying this, if you are members of the Rastafari faith and you're serious about the faith, get serious, serious man, use serious consciousness and start going because Bob Marley said, Africa is the creator. The prophet Marcus Garvey said, there's 400 million Africans willing to shed their blood for Africa. It's not the African inside, it's the African outside Africa. Yes, so we must start emancipate ourselves and liberate ourselves and start defending Africa to the fullness. Don't just take up last of fire and think there's a thing where you just go and um, smoke marijuana, listen to reggae music. And speaking about reggae music, you know, some people say that reggae music is Rasta music. Me, Rasta man, you can disagree. But again, 99% of the time when I disagree about things, I don't disagree to be disagreeable. I disagree so we both can learn. Okay, my name is Ras Salomon. I'm the official representative of the Rastafari Faith and Community internationally, worldwide. I also live in the Bronx and I go to East Africa and West Africa, mainly Ghana and Ethiopia. So my view is that reggae is not Rasta music, but Rastafari people popularize reggae. People gravitated to Rasta. Rasta um, reggae music is an ancient African music that rises out of Jamaica, but it is ancient and organic throughout Africa. However, members of the Rastafari faith who say they are singers and players of instruments of reggae, they are the ones who get involved with reggae and promote it, like the great Bob Marley, Burning Spear, and many other more groups. But I wouldn't say reggae is a Rasta music. I would say it's a Jamaican world beat African music. Yeah, well, reggae is an art beat music, and reggae is a music that Maybe it will still reach somewhere without Rasta, yes or no, because it's so organic and it has so many melody and rhythmic patterns to it. So reggae is a article music. Also, it's supposed to deal with message. However, they pollute it so much that you have all this dance, all hip-hop version, and you have um, this mixed message coming out of it. But it's really a message music like a newspaper or some news media. But reggae is really... A, a music that really deals with message and meanings and teach you things really. Well, it's not really a, a music that is to deal with romanticism or to say things about women or say crazy nonsensical stuff. Yeah. So, um, musically advanced and intricate and complicated, yeah. the, you know, Sly Dunbar with the, the special rockers after beat that then. Okay. You know, yeah. emulated through other drummers in their own style. Mm -hmm. Every drummer had their own style, and every drummer would do it different on each song. Yeah. In the horn, you had horn section, mm -hmm. you had percussion, you had, you know, mm -hmm. harmonizing, you had all kinds of songwriters, you had mm -hmm. you know, people like Scully, you know. Mm -hmm. People that are legends in the music mm -hmm. in that time. What do you see through the music from that time till now that's going to drive it further? Because that was you know, important times worldwide with all kinds of people around the world asking mm -hmm. for their rights, specifically, you know, civil rights in the U.S. and all these different things happening and the Black Power and mm -hmm. the Black Panthers and how do you see that connecting to now? Because now we're in a real crucial time and yeah. where's the music in that? Well, the music should advance and elevate to a higher heights now. However, 
due to the introduction of um, electronics in the sense by computerized rhythm and computerized um, instruments it kind of put a damper in the music because 99 percent of the people are not producing reggae which is a uh, which, 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 name, which is also dance hall, which is an offshoot from reggae. 99% of the time it's programmed a program computer to give you this rhythm which do have no really organic natural feelings to it. So the dance hall music is, is what's setting back reggae in a sense because it do have no proper message, they do have no proper writers, they do have no proper musicians, they do have no proper producer. And the dance hall that introduced within the reggae in the 80s coming up to the 90s you now. It was really a, a pollution and a perverted version of so-called reggae. But I wouldn't call it reggae because the beat is not natural and the beat is not um, um, syncopated in the sense where it is, it is orchestrated and you can really listen to arrangement. Dancehall is something coming like um, earlier Pocomina, earlier Kumina, and some folk business like because what happened really is that it. Like I repeat and say, it's not natural, it's not organic. This is just a hustler thing. What mess up reggae today is hustler producer, hustler artist, hustler musician. Mm. So you speak about the like, Kumina and Pokemania, yeah. things like that. Um, that. You would connect that back to Africa as well, of course. Yeah? Yes. And then how does that, what's the step between Kumina and um, reggae? Coming into well, itself in the 60s. Okay, well, before Kumina and Pokomina, you know, we used to have a thing named quadrille music, you know, and we used to have um, um, rock steady after Kumina and Pokomina, quadrille music. We have rock, we had a type of calypso because even the great Louis Farrakhan was a calypso in the 1958 in Jamaica, they called him Lord Louis. He would sing a tune back to back, belly to belly, I don't care, damn, I get it together. I read it, that's a great Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. They sing that song. So you, um, you have read a Calypso era one time, and in the 60s we have the ska. And then after the ska we had rock steady. And after rock steady we have reggae. And then from reggae now we have dance hall. So I don't know where we're going next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So something like that's happening here in Brockton right now, um, how do you see the music, um, Rasta music? Okay. Well, connecting to that mission. Yeah. Do you think it inspires it? Do you think it, it makes things drive these as a force to kind of provide inspiration for things like this? Or what, what's your view of that? I think we need to get a clear Rasta music reggae because reggae is reggae and Rasta music is um, bull drum in with bass drum and kete drum and a repeater drum and a funde drum, which is a bass drum. Mm -hmm. So you have a kete drum, the repeater drum, and the funde drum, three basic drums that make up Rasta music. However, reggae artists that gravitated to Rastafari feel them get involved with reggae and push reggae. But really and truly, we have a difference of Rasta music and reggae music. So we can we kinda we kinda not to mix up both of them together. Rasta music is Rasta music and reggae music is reggae music. Well, you have Rastafarian artists try to dub the Naya Bingi sound within the reggae and say that's Rasta music. But as usual, you're going to have people of various influential background coming with their influence. Mm -hmm. And that's how culture, time, words and everything go through changes. Like you have Middle English, Old English. So things go through changes. Okay, then put it this way. Alright, you think Bob Marley Burning Spear, you know, Junior Biles, mm -hmm. um, Prince Farai. Do you think that these people have a role in where the center is today? In this, in how it's grown? You'll see in a minute how, what they've managed to accomplish here. Yeah, all those artists that you call, they make great contribution to the music, being coming from a Rastafari background. However, if they could be producers and writers and, in, and, and uh, arrangers today to help lift the, the music and save the music, they'll be doing greater works than what they're doing in the past. Because right now, reggae need a, 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 a savior, in a sense, need a savior. And it need, um, it need um, some form of treatment, you know, not just a band-aid, but it needs some form of treatment because the dance hall 
offshoot that coming out of reggae, which is this computerized rhythm and two chords and offshoot from like a little ska sometime, a little um, pokominia, a little um, um, kumina. Mm -hmm. And it's not really reggae. Mm -hmm. Well, the drum beat throughout African people's life work as an instrument, like a telegraph, that you could send messages and talk to the drum and thing. However, the drum is our heartbeat and our rhythm beat, like in reggae, the drum and bass is the heartbeat of reggae. So the African drums itself, it is essential in even black American around the music. It is essential in even the, the music out of Brazil. It is essential with even the Asian music. It is essential in the Calypso music. The African drum play an intricate part in all music, believe it or not, even classic. Um, I went to Akampang in Jamaica. Yes, and Maroon Town, yeah. Um, and now, uh, what do you see, as, what's special about that place? Well, in a sense, it is special because the Maroon kept that heritage, like what you see in Ghana, the Ashanti people, the Kumasi people, and the Koramanti people them. These are Maroon people where they can trace back roots from Ghana to Jamaica and from Jamaica to Ghana. So it's very interesting that all these people keep the survival of their roots. Very interesting. And and the, the head of the whole town is called the Colonel? Yes. A Colonel. And it comes down from around the time, you know, yes. they were like an army, but it was more like um, yeah, they have lieutenant, they have lieutenant, they have colonel, they have captain. They, 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 they um, classify the ranking within the, Mar within the Maroons, like from the British Army. They classify colonel, captain, lieutenant, and etc., etc. So you go there now? And oh, no, no, I've never been to the Maroon Tournament, but in no. Ghana, I went to Kumasi. I went to see the Coromanti view, but in Jamaica, I've never been to a Maroon town. Maybe, but I don't remember right now, but yeah. in Africa, Ghana, I went to Maroon places, you know. How important is that right now? Surviving Olin and the, and the culture. It is paramount because really and truly, you know, Marcus Gavin said that are people without them history is like roots, like with a tree without roots. So if you're not Olin and part of your culture, that's why again, to the West, Rasta is organic. The only perfect and only natural thing come out of Africa. Everything else come out of Africa now, but Rasta right now, it is so organic in the sense where it pick out the best out of all over Africa and remind everybody about Africa. And it's the only, the only movement, older than even the, the political parties in Jamaica, that was projecting and pushing Africa and talking about Africa a long, long time. Yeah, you never seen in Jamaica say, Rasta fire, older than the two parties there. <laughs> Yeah, Rastafari, hold it down the two of them. When you say see the future in the next ten years, you make it sound like I'm a fortune teller, but <laughs> really and truly, prophecy is how, this is how prophecy go. When you are clear-minded, and when you are thinking, and when you're up to date with current events, and certain events, you can easily well say something, and that's why I'm saying this man prophesied, this man say something. So. If myself and even Brother Rassan is up to date and current affair, local, international, and we can really disseminate that and we can dissect it also, people may think we are prophets. But the future is that reggae music is in a crucial position. Black people worldwide position is in a, a very devastating position because, like I say, now it's 1993 in Ethiopia, because there are seven years behind this Greco-Roman calendar. Now we have 2003 over here. It's 1993 in Ethiopia. So the next four years is the real 2007. It's the real 2000. When it becomes 2007 over here in Ethiopia, just real 2000. So it just depends on the calendar information. Well. I see that if the people them don't find them big enough and see that they're not going nowhere. And I see also that um, with IMF that used to manipulate the so-called third world countries, say the Caribbean, Africa, Asia, India, etc., etc. If these leaders and these finance ministers still okay and loan from the IMF, they're not going nowhere. They have to really fight the IMF because the IMF always give these people money and then devalue their dollar 
and also like for instance a place like Jamaica the MF involved in Jamaica and they bring in foreign potato, foreign onions, foreign chicken and all these things how can a country like that deal with an export import business like that when really and truly they should really go to them natural resource Jamaica used to have bauxite one time in the 50s, 60s, up to the 70s. They used to have bauxite. Just like Ghana, have a serious deposit of bauxite, diamond, gold, and a few more resource, resources and minerals. However, due to the IMF again, because under general, to this president, President Joseph Kofo, they borrow money so much that the city, C-I-D-E-S, which is the Ghanaian dollar, it is 8,000 to 1 US dollar. So when you, when you go to Africa and you see that this, these people have all these resources and the dollar is so low, you must question it. And you must see the, 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 the IMF dealing with um, robbery, aggravation, serious, serious charges that a place like Ethiopia, which they say more famine and more drought, the dollar is stronger. The dollar is eight bar to one US dollar. And a place like Ghana that have gold, diamond, bauxite, and fish agriculture, their dollar is still like zero because 8,000 to one. Zimbabwe, since they're sending out the, the, the black farmers then, the Zimbabwean dollar is 35,000 to one. So the thing is that the more these black countries and these so-called third world countries get involved with the IMF and the IMF have to rip and tear apart their economy and their resource and devalidate dollar and create unemployment and create poverty and create all the obstacles and all the ills in the society. By now the people should wake up and let go of the IMF or choose some of these leaders because these leaders are leaders that always have like a fraction behind them, you know, which is like a warrior groups them from these years to go garrison them in the cities and they create so so called tribalism also. So I think the people and redemption going to come when they can let go of the IMF and they can let go of these backward leaders and when they can find who's them safe and big and when they can find them roots. Yeah, well, people have to really um, wake up and start dealing with their um, survival by any means necessary. Just like Brother Rassan said that our culture, our economy, our economics, our, our economy must be within our culture. Like, for instance, we as a people in America here, we spend six hundred billion dollar every year on consumer items mm -hmm. and all we do we buy everything that other people produce and we produce nothing so by now we need to really stop be this great consumer people that we are and start start do some producing we need to start produce we can't keep consuming 1492 to 1992 that's 500 years and we're going to keep on having people selling us our clothes our hat our shoes our belt and keep taking us through changes are necessary. It's full time for we get people's orient, oriented um, leaders like the great Dr. Fidel Castro, who is for his people. Ninety-nine percent of these leaders they are not for uh, for their people. They only to get a bag from the IMS and from America. And as usual, ninety-nine percent of them work on the CIA, FBI, to destabilize their own people and their country. So we need to wake up from that kind of cobweb that is over our eyes. So do you think the example to follow is uh, something like the moon? Well, that is self-preservation following the maroons there. And it will be a great, great example. However, the way all some of these people mean so-called third world people and black people, the way they are so programmed and the way they are so... Um, they, 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 they're so um, confused. They need to deprogram themselves because they come in like when you domesticate a cat or a dog, you look after all of that cat or dog welfare, and if you let back that cat or dog in a natural environment, it cannot survive. So some black people is like that. If you let them go to go and live naturally, they'll catch cold and die. They'll get all type of sickness and disease and die because they cannot survive any at all. We too used to the slave master, we too used to um, the, the bus, the plane, the train. None of us here in this house they even know to ride on a donkey back to go even half mile, half block. And people in Africa ride on donkey half for two days, three days. Like we have a big water problem in Ethiopia and most part of Africa. 
But we have a lot of mules and donkey. Why we can't use them to pull the water till we can get drills and wells? You see what I'm saying? So it's more use what you have. Yeah, yeah. Forward. Yeah, find find that genuine entrepreneur skill or ideology that is possessed within you and utilize it. Don't just get up every day and think, say, well, then that, um, okay, we have to depend on um, the caucus and them um, tractor, the, the, the tools, and their ideology and their way. You must remember, you know, your way or my way might be the same every time. So we have to stick to our natural way. Because, like I say, as Brother Rassan would say, make our economy be within our culture. And we need to keep things within our culture because we cannot keep having foreign invaders and foreign intro, um, intrusion every time. We can't have those things. We have to wake up and move on. Well, like I said earlier on this evening before this taping, all of us need to work on self and economics. You see, when you work on self, you can choose materialism and be able to work in materialism and dub it with spiritualism, like His Majesty said. Material wealth and spiritual wealth go hand in hand. So if you work on self, and you can let go some of the baggages and shed some of the negativity and some of the nonsensical behavior that you've been doing and you work on self like that, your economy vision will be more clearer and you can see and know what to do. So once you work on self and economics, and like I said, using the five principles that I'm, I'm doing my best to use, which is humbleness, honesty, respect, responsibility and commitment, if we don't do this thing to each other and to self first, we're not reaching in a way because I thought there's an Egyptian quote say, man know thyself. So it's like the best thing to save the world and save the people is everyone start work on self and economics. And like I say, humbleness and things will manifest by due season. Give thanks and praise. Peace and love, one love. The, the word maroon is actually a derogatory term, you know. They're actually officially known as the Coromant people because most of the maroons in Jamaica come out of that line. My grandfather was a Coromante. These are a set of maroon people that never even reasoned with the British. They never came to know treaty with them or nothing and they were known as the Coromante people. They were more a warrior type of people that wouldn't give up. They didn't recognize the British so they didn't even sit down and talk with them. They would go into the farms and thing and take the rest of the, 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 the um, workers off the farms physically and take them up in the mountains. You know what I mean? That was the kind of activity they carried. They are the ones that actually defeated the British, you know, um, not only with brute force and warrior tactics, but they have a lot of other methods that they use to defeat the British, where the British just had to give up. Well, my grandfather, he was a coromante, you know, and he used to heal with his hands, you know what I mean? And he used to tell us about, uh, he used to tell my mother, who passed it on to us, and my aunt Rose, who passed it on to us, about how oh, the Maroons used to use herbs, you know, they, especially one herb which was known as the spirit weed, where they would pick it and they'd eat it, and it would, it has an effect on the body to speed up the vibration of every cell in the body and make you invisible, you know, where they couldn't see them. And they used that tactics against when the British soldiers would come up to attack them, they would all be invisible. And they would attack them and the British guys would just throw away their guns and head back to the camp and wouldn't go out anymore. They said that like the trees were fighting them, everything in, the, everything in nature was fighting them. You know, so those are some of the tactics that they knew because they knew their environment. And they knew how to move in that environment. The British had to just form, just give up and leave them alone. They, they refused to even talk with them. You had the other set of maroons now who was more a domesticated type of maroon. They were known as maroons. They took on that derogatory term. It's, it, the, the word maroon, you know, is a word like you'd say, to a, you'd ca call a black person, pardon my expression, nigger. 
that had the same connotation to a coromante when they would call them maroons in a very derogatory way. You see, you had the domesticated ones who was known as maroons. They are the ones that signed the agreement with the British. So, I mean, they were the ones that signed that agreement. They were spread out all over. After, after we got emancipated, um, we refused to work for the slave master refuse outright, you know, and set up our own systems of moving goods and services and information, you know what I mean, trading with different groups spread out through the cockpit country, areas of Jamaica, which is known as areas like Quick Step, you know, Quick Step in the land of Look Behind, that's up in the cockpit region, you should know about that region, well that was like the home base of the Coromante people, you know what I mean, and they had their own system of moving goods and services, you know, and set up an independent system. Politicians like Bustamante and Burnham and them guys, not Burnham really, but Barrows and them guys is who broke up that system, you know, by bringing the cutlass and the pickaxe and the shovel. That was the pickaxe and shovel mentality where they would come in and Bustamante would go to the Coromante, to the so-called maroon people and tell them, look, the queen, the king or whosoever would give them cutlass and they would give one to him neighbor and would and just cut everything nice and a pickaxe and just dig up the soil good. So I said, look, if you, if you guys want some tools like that, you know, send me as your representative to the Queen and I will get you all the pickaxe and shovel you need. See what I mean? And that's the trick they use. Things like that, not only pickaxe and shovel, but other things too. Hey, you don't need to use cork or bush for soap. The Queen will sell you soap in a nice bar. All you have to do is just go through and it smells sweet. So they stop using the cork or bush and the aki. Aki, you know, the aki do like so we to bathe with that, any kind of disease you have on your skin, you know. In, in Africa it's known as the brain tree, because it's good for the brain, the aki, it's a brain food, you see. So they would do that and then they would bring these things in and after a while, you have to have money to get it. After you get hooked to it, they say, okay, you can't just give me a bag of yam or how much head of corn for a cutlass, they have to give me so much pound. Or you're going to get money, you don't know nothing about money. Mm. So you have to give him control over your land. When you tell you, okay, everything you produce, you give it to me. And I give you some pounds that you can give back to me for cutlass and soap and cooking oil, all them things when we had coconut oil. And broke up our economic system, we got back dependent and then, see, mm -hmm. that's how the old system got broken back down after emancipation. Yeah, well, fast forward to now, we find see the position we are in, where a guy can come to me who live up in the mountains in Content District in Portland and tell me I am poor. And my people have a house, them have animals running up all over the place. We drink spring water, we don't drink polluted pipe water, we drink spring water and rain water. We, ba we drink rain water, bathe in spring, have food, we have food all over the place, but them tell you we poor in order to get rich. Them want to set up a factory where them can come and exploit you, you know, and take your land. And a lot of people fell for it, found themselves in a city, you know what I mean? have to buy food, have to pay rent, then they have electric, you know. They use all that to break up our economic system. Even up to today, said maybe two, three years ago, them run electric light up in our area. All the daughters were decent little girls and the brethren, them was decent, respectable people. They bring electric light. Why them bring electric light? Not because them want we have light, because them want to sell us frigidaire and radio and TV to pollute the, the minds of our youth. You go back up there now, 
after the little daughter them pregnant, which never take place. They all into some little fornication. They dance in all kind of little slack and lewd ways, you know what I mean? From what we call development and progress. Well, that kind of products we don't need. Better we burn torch more than have electric light. Next thing them do, them run pipe. About three years ago, them run pipe up in my district. Okay, forget about catch rainwater and drink rainwater. I go and run a pipe. This is progress. And then bring in the pipe from the reservoir, the water from the reservoir and then charge your money for every water you use when you used to get it free. Rain water and spring water we used to drink. Now them bring in that little parasite pipe water. Now half of the woman them have cysts and fibroids. And that is progress. See? What we have to do as, as a people, we have to really look into what is progress and define for ourselves what is progress. And don't let someone else define for us what is progress. You see, in Africa, South America, the Caribbean, we can't go to the high-tech business because we don't make no computer. From you go to the computer and go rely on it for you, not to say you can't use it, you know what I mean? But we shouldn't let it be the backbone of our development or else we're going to get stuck and it's going to take us to a, another level of dependency. You see what I mean? Because we have to define what is progress. We have to define that. We can't make some little guy come and define what our progress is. You see it, what happened to us when they bring electric light. It upset the morality of our children. Them watching TV. Them want that. Them want frigidaire. Them want everything them see on TV. Before we had electric up there, we didn't have that. Everybody was satisfied. The system was working on harmonious way. He had a shoemaker who had about three apprentices. He had a tailor who had three apprentices. He had a dressmaker who had three, four apprentices. It was a stable, self-sustainable economic system that only one thing it would do was develop. Develop every time, but they cut that off. The next thing they do, they open a supermarket or a, 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 close, a store where sell ready-made clothes come from England and America. And the TV show you like a guy in a little drop-off pants styling, so you want that. Mm -hmm. You see? You know then what, what happened? The pants are probably cheaper, right? Eh? Yeah, yeah, sure, because they can't steal, they're stealing everything, you know, so they don't pay for what the raw material. Okay. They don't pay for the raw material. What's they take your that. argument to them? Well, it's not so much an argument to them, but it's what my argument to our people. Mm -hmm. We don't want to talk. We don't have to talk to them. Because what we want? Buying that thing, you see that, you know, genetically engineered banana big. I yeah. see the market yeah. in Kingston, and I say, which ones are the local? And they yeah, they clean out the carrots that are all twisted. And yeah, big. yeah. And I'm like, oh, so those must be, and they are huge. Yes, giant. yes. Long, yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes, yes. Like yes. Play-Doh Once that happened, you know, once them bring in all the shoe companies, what that do? The shoemaker go out of work. Thousands of shoemakers across Jamaica go out of work, do have no work. And these thousands of shoemakers used to have thousands of apprentices learning shoemaking. Same thing with the tailor. Same thing with the carpenter. Same thing with the dressmaker. You know what I mean? They did the same thing progressively to destroy our economic base, which was based into our culture. We used to, we used to have potteries. We used to have, to have clay potteries where they used to make pots and cups. You know what I mean? But what they do? Westinghouse and them come in and start selling steel and iron pot and even iron for eat with. You know what I mean? If you from you put something in an iron pot, you know, it's done, you know. Plus, it's not economically beneficial to us to use an iron pot. It's better we use a clay pot because we can go down the street and buy a clay pot from our brethren and the money stained in the community. You see? 
We could go down the road and buy a piece of yam or a bunch of banana or some breadfruit instead of go to the supermarket and buy some little polluted food with them bring from America and England. This is the way we have to look towards development. In Africa we try we can't build, develop Africa or the Caribbean or South America on a pattern that's been laid out by Europe or North America. It's a pattern for defeat. It's with defeat in our own self. When we go to school, say we, you, we have guys leave Africa, go to Europe and learn economy and all that. Well, they are learned economy based on a formula that's going to keep Europe in power and keep Europe dominant over us. So when we go back, when they go back to Africa now, they are applying a system that is working against them. You see what I mean? They are applying a system that can be beneficial to us. It's beneficial to the country where them learn it in. You see, that's why them take them and give them scholarship to go there and learn it. And give to them free to, because no way send them back. They alone, they are going to government and they make up all these economic plans and they brainwash them that the IMF way is the best way. And they are the ones that implement in this IMF plan and World Bank plan and free trade plan. Oh, free trade going to work for we. We have none to dump on nobody market. Oh, free trade going to help we. Why we have to trade? You have a hundred billion trillion things to trade and I have two. What kind of free market is that? I'm giving you the upper hand on me every time. Mm -hmm. So we have to, what we have to do is stop. Don't pay them no more money. We don't owe them nothing, they owe us money now. Africa don't owe the West a penny. The West owe Africa money. All the West have to do now is give back to Africa 25% of what they steal and everything. All right, we settle for that. We don't owe them nothing. We, we shouldn't pay IMF, World Bank, not a penny anymore. You understand? Until we do that, we're going to be a slave to them economically. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So we have to do pay them nothing. Withdraw from all of their organizations. Do sign no more agreement with them. Oh, I go to grow cocoa and you go to tell me how much you go to pay me for my things. And we have leaders accept that. But when I come to buy some from you, I can't tell you how much I go to pay. You tell me, move with that. When you come, then you go to come tell me that you go to give me, I'm for one of your money, you must give me 8,000 a year. It's madness that I don't blame them. Europe has to look out for Europeans. I don't have nothing against that. I have something against them little parasite leaders that is misleading our people. If a guy bring a US dollar, you want one of mine for that? If you don't want it, don't bring it. I can live off banana and yam. I have all the food. I have everything I need to survive because my ancestors used to survive long before there was a dollar. Mm -hmm. Long before the Satan bring that. We used to survive long before that, live better everything before them come. So we don't need them. They need us more than we need them, but they use reverse psychology on us. Make us believe that we need them, mm -hmm. but we don't need them. Mm -hmm. They need us more than we need them. Well. The shift, it, it's almost at the end now, you know. It's, a, it's the great equalizer that is coming, you know what I mean? Where the Almighty is going to bring the richest man down to the level of the poorest man. And he's going to bring the mightiest man down to the level of the weakest man. So everybody going to be equal. And we're going to see who going to win that struggle. We know who going to win, right? From, from that up, we're going to know who going to win. That's what's coming about. It's going to happen in the wink of an eye. Who can't live off the land, going to suffer. Go off a line up in a line to get some little polluted dry milk and submit themselves to all kind of belittlement to get some little polluted food. You know what I mean? If them don't know to live off the land. Our objective now is to acquire land. And it's like the Mormons, them in Pennsylvania and the Pennsylvania judge people or them guys and them said them don't send them children to no school them don't pay no taxes them don't buy nothing from nobody 
them produce food, everything them need. Them do have electric light, them do drive motor car, but they have respectable children and they are independent. Mm -hmm. You see, that nobody can hold them hostage because them produce them own food, them educate them own children. They don't need your electric light, we don't need your motor cars, we don't need your computers. And look at their society, and we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people, not talking about no little small community. We are talking about thousands of people spread out across America mm -hmm. in communities all over America that's living that way. That is our only way out. What other way we're going to go? Which other way we're going to go? When them ready, them we change everything in the computer and just let we have that now because it's beneficial to them that we have it. You understand? Them go change that system in a little while, it will be a totally different system like how we change a motor car. You understand? And make our brain weak. They have reached, the, the economic system in the world has reached a point, you see? where they need brain power to run it and we have the brain power so they will come to africa and they say oh i'll give you um a thousand scholarships in engineering you know why because them know we have the brain power and they need a thousand engineers to work in their system mm -hmm. okay come to america and they take you and they teach you engineering and then you just stay in America and you work for them to make them stronger. So they are using our own brain power against us. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so we have to watch all them scholarship things too. It's better I teach you how to farm, to raise food and be a carpenter, how to build a house, and how to plant food and irrigate farms, not the, the traditional way. But we can't go down the road where they are leading us. They are leading us down a dead end road. Mm. And we can't put our hopes, our hopes into this electronic system. It's going to let us down. Yeah. Because I know the Father tell we are ready. What going to happen? And once we know that, then we don't have to fear because we know, we know that we go around things. See, for Four countries going to run things in the world politically, militarily, and economic, economically. It's going to be China, India, Africa, South America, which going to include Central America and the Caribbean. Those are going to be the four pillars of this earth. And these countries are going to run things economically, militarily, and politically. You see, nothing can stop that. The whole power structure in the world is changing. No doubt about that. You see, all you see them talking about war is a bluff, them bluffing. Right. No, but we have in our corner prophecy. <laughs> that's, what, that's where our strength lies. We have prophecy on our side. The meek and humble and downtrodden and rejected going to inherit the earth and dwell in the abundance of peace thereof. That's we. And, and whosoever have eyes to see and ears to hear. You see what I mean? The whole economic system is changing and the system that's been governing the world is about to fall. Just like you see, the Soviet Union fell in the wink of an eye. That's the first beast that went down. We have two more beasts leave. That's Britain and the United States. With them like a sidekick, Israel. Israel is really part of the United States. Israel is not a separate nation. Israel is part of the United States because everything Sharon do, he get orders from the White House to do it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So they are not a separate nation. They are part of America. And that's, that's part of the war that they're waging against certain people in that area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the two other two beasts that lead to fall. And we're going to see them fall like that. There's going to be much weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth in them same streets out there in a little while, trust me. You're going to see troops on them streets out there in a little while. People are going to be tearing down supermarkets to get food. You understand? And there's food. We have to learn how to live off the land. Mm -hmm. We can't even deal with them schools. Because 90% of what them teach you we never use for the rest of our life. 
Trust me. Ninety percent of what you, you, you learn in school we never use for the rest of our life. The only thing we use is reading, writing, and mathematics. Mm -hmm. And you can teach your children that in your house. We have too much empty church all day long mm -hmm. to be sending our children to public school. You know what I mean? Them churches have to be open and come into schools in the daytime and take our children out of these public schools because Satan have a plan for them. Mm -hmm. How much of them used to come out of them public school that make it? Uh, how long we're going to go fall for the same trick? They are misleading our youth in these schools. We have to take them out of the schools and educate them ourselves. The Jews do it. The Mormons doing it. Lots of other people doing it, and you can't see the difference in their youth. It's not no pie in the sky business. Mm -hmm. And it don't cost no millions of dollars to do it either. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It don't cost that. We have the facilities to do it. It's the same thing like food. Mm -hmm. We have farmers in the south begging us to, but we will run to the supermarket when we have churches sitting down here empty all week long. These churches are supposed to buy the food for the farmers and bring it in the church. Every Saturday, Sunday, you can go there and buy your supplies of vegetables. Seventy percent of all black people in church Sunday. Seventy percent of all black people in America is in church on Sunday. So where you going to reach them? They, these churches have to, to become more, more responsive to the needs of the community. You see what I mean? These churches have to start becoming schools so we don't have to send our children to, to no public school to make some guys rich. And we don't have to go run, go run into no supermarket to buy no fruits and vegetables and potatoes and all them things. When we have black farmers in the south having to throw away food because nobody to buy it. Mm -hmm. And they must be giving up them land. And we have how much we spending how much billions of dollars every year for, for nonsense and food that's killing us. Mm -hmm. Our whole consciousness has to change. Our whole outlook on on, on progress, what is progress, we have to define and uh, that, you know? Because mm -hmm. if you ask the average man what, out there, what is progress, he can't tell you. What am I going to tell you? Buy a computer and go on the internet. Uh -huh, the car. Look here, you see the internet? The good we get from the internet, the negativity far surpass that. You see, Satan set up the internet to entrap and mislead people. You understand? With no apology. Satan set that up. This is part of the satanic system to entrap us. Mm -hmm. But to catch a fish, you have to give them a bait. You can't drop a hook in the water. Even the fish is not that foolish. Mm -hmm. So what them do with the internet? Them give you some and them take some. Like Ras Solomon say, you have to pick the sense from the nonsense. That don't mean we don't can still use it to get what we need out of it. But we have to be mindful of that and don't let it be part of our developmental pro program. Mm -hmm. We can't rely on it to be part of our developmental program. Mm -hmm. I have one more question for you, because unfortunately we have so many tapes with me today. Otherwise, talk, talk for much longer. <laughs> because you know the reasoning is good, you know? you mind putting your mic up just a little bit? Rest it on the side. That's cool. Yeah, I just have one more question because um, I want to connect this back to the music and what the role of the music is. Mm. Um, I met some dub poets in Kingston, the dub, poet, um, dub traffickers. I don't know if you know, heard of those guys, but they're all network of yeah. poets and they you know, have their own just to do their own thing, they're all about that spirit. And yeah, he had one song called Enter the Net, Into the Net of the Spider's Web, you know, and I could just picture him performing yeah, it. Yeah. And these things, these performances, this music, how do you see it connecting to that message that, that's so important? Well, even talking about, just to finish up with the net, if you look at the, um, the, 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 the there's always a clue in everything, you know. 
And it's the net. If you look at the terms that they give, the internet, what is a net? A net is a fishing net that entraps fish, you have them for dinner. What is a web, a spider web? Entrapment. It all, con it all leads, the words that they use lead to entrapment. A net is an entrapment. A web is an entrapment. So the net is an entrapment. Mm -hmm. The music. You see, reggae, the, the definition of reggae music, reggae music is to deliver a positive message. Dancehall music is not reggae music. Right? Forget about that one. That is just a, like a put together jump up thing. It's not reggae music. Reggae music is to deliver a positive message. Reggae music used to be used to communicate back and forth. Like we was reason about reggae music and what it used to do when me and Ras Salaman and the brethren was coming up. Was reading the reason about that subject. In the sixties, man used to send messages in the music to the brethren up here, tell them what's going on down there. And music used to go, messages used to go back and forth. Them used to use reggae music all to order ganja. You know, in the music. All kinds of things used to go on with the music was a practical thing. It was not theory, it was a practical vehicle that was used to achieve things. You see, reggae was a greater cake, you know, make with coconut. Reggae was a greater cake, make with coconut. In Franklin Town, in Jamaica, a lady named Miss Avis on Cumberland Avenue, right beside Franklin Town Gully, used to make greater cake, greater coconut and make it with sugar. They used to have a hard one and then used to have a soft one. See? And say like you play football and you make a good move, them say, wow, that's a good move, it's hard like Miss Reggae, Miss Avis, hard reggae. You know, it got into the lifestyle. If it, if it was so hard, ah, sure, that's soft, man. Soft like Miss Avis, soft reggae. The girls, them used to eat the soft one, the man, them used to eat the hard one. So they used to associate it with things, then they started to associate it with the music. Them hear a tune, that hard man, hard like Miss Avis, hard reggae. You know what I mean? Then Toots and the Maters was the first to associate it with the, the, with the, the word, with the music in a record named Do the Reggae. It came from that. So the word reggae, Reggae is a greater cake, a coconut cake that was associated in the community to different things that was happening. It became a slang term like, you know, like I said, show that ad, I said that iry, you know what I mean? And that's how it became. It, it, reg, the music got that name. Reggae. Reggae is a combination of rock steady and ska. Ska was too fast, so them slow it down to rock steady. And they took it too slow, so they blend the two of them, come up with the reggae, which was more progressive. Quick stepping, it was quicker stepping, you know what I mean? You could move to it better, but it was always delivering a message. Mm -hmm. All the time it was delivering a message, you know what I mean? And the word, the term reggae was, came to be, in the, the, in the definition was to deliver positive music, to a positive message. Reggae was to deliver a positive message.
Greetings in the name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Iris Lassie. Joe! Rastafari. My God, Lassie, the first sitting around in the heart of our man, woman, and child. King of kings, lords of lords, conquering line, the tribe of Judah, elect of God. Earth right to rule us, Lassie, the first. Joe! Rastafari. How good and pleasant it is to see Virgin and Sister Indiana. Give down some praise to the most high God, Charles the Fire, right? For this moment, give thanks to our lineage of David, Queen of Sheba, Solomon, Ethiopia, Blessed Land, the beginning of civilization. Beginning of humanity, where all things come from. It's a great honor, each and every one of y'all day tonight, and I and I be the present of Zari Yaakov.
how good and pleasant it is to see brothers and sisters gather in unity, you know? Yeah, man. We there in Terry Pines, right? Yeah, man. We give thanks in the name of the Mosai, Karamawe, Ababa Janai, Selassie, and Ja. Yeah, we was on a journey through the mountains here in um, San Diego. It was all blessed. Um, Sister Elizabeth giving us a little tour. And uh, we have sisters traveling from LA, brothers from San Diego, brothers from Puerto Rico. So we're just going to introduce the Rasta family to the house of Rastafari. I must say that Rastafari had transcended on four corners of the universe. And, and no matter where we come from, we are all one, we are African. As Africa, we are here, you know? Repatriation is a must. And through these journeys, I tell you again, I will write it in the book so you shall hear your name out in the universe because we only sons of God are doing their works. And we come along and we see each other on the path of the road of righteousness. We shall greet each other in love, harmony, peace, you know, that we could come together like this and share it out to the whole world. So again, give thanks again, everyone, you know, for the journey and everyone protection. Jaga in the name of his imperial majesty from your going out and coming in from this time forth and even for Iva and Iva. So last year. Ja.